Hi everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing RISE syndrome. Also referred to as RAISE syndrome, either way you pronounce it, it doesn't matter. So this is something you learn about in your pediatric class because this is something that can affect children. So what is it and what causes it? The cause isn't entirely understood. What happens usually is a child will have some sort of viral illness like the flu or chicken pox or something like that and they'll be given aspirin as opposed to ibuprofen or acetaminophen and then this can occur. So a lot of times people want to associate Rye syndrome with aspirin. The two kind of go hand in hand. Is aspirin safe to give to children? It is technically approved to be given to children over the age of three, but it is, you know, you gotta be very cautious with it and you definitely don't wanna give it to a child who's had a viral illness. This causes liver dysfunction and cerebral edema. And so some signs and symptoms we might see as a result include lethargy, irritability, confusion and delirium, vomiting, seizures, and a loss of consciousness. And you'll see what I did here is I kind of underlined things in red and green as to what they're associated with. So the vomiting happens because of the liver, right? Because of the liver dysfunction. And all these other things, these are neurological things that happen as a result of the cerebral edema. When we do labs, look at all of these. I put them all in red. Liver, these are liver labs, right? So your AST and your ALT, that's going to be elevated. Your ammonia is going to be elevated and your coagulation times are going to be elevated, all because of this liver dysfunction that it causes. And some things that we can do or really assist the doctor to do in like diagnostic testing include liver biopsies and then a lumbar puncture, which is also called like a spinal tap. And they do this one because they want to make sure that it's not meningitis, which is another, you know, dangerous thing that children can get. So now that we've talked about the basics, let's talk about what the nurse can do for this child. Now let's talk about nursing care for these children. And really, it's going to vary. It's going to be very individualized depending on how severe the child has it. So some potential things that the nurse would do would maintain good hydration, so they'll probably be on IV fluids. Strict INO, and they might even have a catheter placed. We want to keep the head of the bed elevated 30 degrees, and we don't want to reposition them too much. We don't want to move them around. We kind of want to keep them very neutral and safe. We need to give pain medications as appropriate. Again, depending on how like severely neurologically damaged they are, we have to be a little bit more careful about that, so that's going to be a little bit more individual. But we can give other pain medications. And remember, it causes that liver dysfunction, so the clotting times are increased. So something we can help with that would be vitamin K. Of course, they're going to be on seizure precautions. In severe cases, we will assist with intubation, and they might need to be on a ventilator. Lots of education for the family, because of course this is really scary and it's happening to a kid and nobody expects this kind of stuff to happen. So lots of education, lots of updates, all of that. We can administer something called mannitol, which is an osmotic diuretic. And the point of that is to help decrease that cerebral swelling. And then we're going to observe for signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure. And after they get over it, so if it's not so severe and they don't, you know, end up passing away from it, um, they can recover from it. This is something that children can recover from. So after that, we still have some work to do. So of course, we want to do lots of patient education for the parents, telling them to avoid aspirin, which ASA is the shorthand for aspirin. And then reading all medication labels from now on to make sure they don't have anything called salicylates, which is what's in aspirin. So we want to avoid this on any meds that we give the patient or any meds that the patient will get at home from the parents. And then depending on how bad it was, the patient may have long-term neurological damage. And so that's really going to depend on, you know, the special instructions and the treatment that they're going to have at home. 
So I know this one is kind of like scary and bad, right? You know, we don't ever want to think of like bad things happening to children or them potentially getting sick and dying. But that's why this is so important for you as the nursing student to know so that you can give proper education to the parents and the families. So hopefully we can avoid this from happening in the first place. And definitely, yeah, it's going to be on ATI and it's going to be on NCLEX. This is a big one. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.